if you're trying to make a living as an artist, you're going to get a lot of advice about what you should and should not be doing. And unfortunately, some of the most common advice you're going to get is going to be the absolute wrong thing to do. Now, in this video, I'm going to tell you about the worst piece of advice I was ever given. And I was given it on multiple times by multiple people. And I still hear many artists being given this advice. If you don't know me, I'm Tim Packer. I've had a very successful career as an artist. I've made several million dollars from the sale of my work. And I've also helped thousands of artists with my online art academy. Okay, so what is the worst piece of advice that I've ever been given? Well, to understand this, I have to go back to where I was at that time. So this was about three years after I'd quit my job as a police officer, cashed in my pension to try to make a living full-time as an artist. Now, I was all over the map at this time in terms of subject matter, stylistic approach, what medium I was using, and it often looked like a different artist had done each different painting that I did. Now, I was starting to actually get some half-decent sales. I was making over $20,000 a year, but when I did a festival, I would have like a multitude of different subjects, different styles, different mediums in my tent. And many, many times I've received this well-meaning advice from other artists or even from clients. And what they said was, you know, it's very confusing um, to see your booth because you have all of these different types of work here. We don't know like who you are as an artist. You would probably do much better if you just picked one of these things and stuck with it. And that sounds like good advice. But here's the thing. There was nothing that I had done yet that was getting the, oh my God, I love it reaction. Everybody kind of liked most of the work that I did. I mean, I'd already mastered a lot of the skills. I'd already mastered composition. So that every piece that I did was a pretty good painting. But the problem is there's hundreds of thousands of artists out there doing pretty good paintings. And what the public invariably does is go to the pretty good paintings that are the cheapest. And I just kind of knew in my mind that there was no point stopping and picking something yet. Like if you haven't reached the point where you're creating work that the public just absolutely loves, why on earth would you stop learning and searching for your voice and just pick that? You're going to be doomed to a life of painting pretty good art that the public kind of likes. And that's like a guaranteed sentence of life as a starving artist. So I just knew that I had to keep pushing. I had to keep honing my skills. I had to stay in process mode. I had to keep trying to find that special thing, right? That, that one kind of subject and process and medium where I love the process, I love the finished work, and the public absolutely loved the finished work. And thank God I did that. Now, around 2005, that's when I had a breakthrough that changed my life. So this painting here is the very first painting that I ever completed that was kind of representative of what my career would look like later on. Now, this painting got a ton of reaction. It sold right away, and I could have sold it 20 times, and I thought this might be it. So then I hunkered down, picked this one thing, and painted a lot of pieces in a series using the same process, same subject matter, and same medium. Well, the very first time I actually showed a body of work like this was with the Toronto Art Expo, and I did $28,000 in sales in one weekend. And I just knew that my life was never going to be the same, and now was the time to pick that thing. Now, over the course of the last 20 years, I've made a very, very good living painting work like this. But in 2020, I decided that just cranking out more paintings and making more money wasn't going to be enough for me. I had learned an awful lot about the business of being an artist. And I realized that's the biggest chink in the armor for most artists. They have no idea how to actually go about making a living from their art. So I formed my own art academy. And now my mission is to share all of the things that I've learned through a very successful career with other aspiring artists. Now, I recently created a YouTube video that details all of the steps that I took to actually find my own unique voice and all of the various stages of my development. If you're interested in learning how I went about doing that, I'll put a link here at the end of the video and you can click on that to watch it.